Hey everybody, Bob here and welcome back to another Making Stuff video. If you saw my last video, I had my Z-axis constructed. I was ready to mount it to this plate, but I ran into a problem and I said I would fix it on the next video. Well, this is the next video and here's the problem that I need to fix. The problem I've got is the height between the bottom of the gantry and the top of this piece of plywood is too tall. So what I need to do is I need to lower the gantry so that it kind of closes this gap right here. Now the first idea that I had was to remove the gantry from the machine, take these side supports off and then cut about two inches off and then put the whole machine back together and then that would lower this, the two inches that I needed to get that extra clearance or to reduce that extra clearance that I've got right now. But then I looked at the machine and I realized here on the sides, there's plenty of space on this side support. I can actually get my hand underneath there. So what I decided to do instead was to loosen these side bolts on the Y-axis bearing plate and then lower the whole gantry. I can lower it about an inch and a quarter. And then also this piece of plywood has really just been here as a temporary work surface for the construction of the machine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece of plywood off and put two sheets of MDF on here. That's going to be my actual spoil board for the machine. And then that's also going to raise the cutting surface of the machine. And then hopefully it's going to close this gap enough so that I can put my Z axis and spindle on this plate and then actually start getting to use it to do some cutting. All right, so I've got the Z axis mounted to my plate and everything is good to go. Now I need to mount the spindle onto the Z axis. This is the spindle I'm going to be mounting on the machine. It is a one and a half kilowatt air cooled spindle that I got from Banggood and I will put links to it in the description. I also have a 
pretty wide. I think it's three quarters of an inch. It may even be an inch wide bit installed in the machine. You can see that the spindle will actually stay propped up and balanced on this bit. And the reason why I have the wide bit on here is because I'm going to use this as a starting point for getting the spindle trammed with the machine. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place it up here, let the spindle rest on this bit and this is like I said it's a starting point for getting it trimmed I'm going to mark my holes and then after I get it all mounted I can go back and fine-tune it and shim it so I can make sure that the spindle isn't leaning to the left or the right or it's tilted forward or backwards all right so I've got it all hooked up here and if you noticed I've only got two screws here and these screws are also slightly smaller than the holes in the spindle and that is to give me a little bit of wiggle room here so I can fine tune the adjustment to getting this level and in the right plane. And if this doesn't work then I will have to come up with something else. Maybe I can try again and use some of these other holes or just move this up or down a little bit and just disregard the holes that I just drilled and tapped. So what I need to do now is get it all wired up and running and then I will do a test with this wide bit on here so I can see just how level and in plane everything is. And I also want to point out that I put this ruler here. It's uh, made out of aluminum. I put it on here because I was afraid when I had the spindle balanced on the end of this wide bit that it was possible that these teeth could have been digging into this soft MDF here and that may have caused it to be out of level. So I just went ahead and used that ruler and that's why that is right here. All right, and something else I'm going to do is while I have the drive reduction assembly off of the machine for the x-axis, I'm going to swap this motor out. I'm going to put this larger motor on the x-axis and then I'm going to use this smaller motor for the z-axis and by doing that both of the X and the Y axis will match because these larger motors are what I'm using on the Y axis and I would just like to have everything on the X and the Y match. And I really don't think I need this big of a motor on the Z axis anyway. So like I said, while I got it apart, I'm just gonna swap them out. Alright, so I've got the machine basically finished. It's ready to start making some cuts. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check the tram of the machine, make sure everything is level in plane. And I'm just going to do this manually. I'm just going to jog the machine. I'm going to come down, move over, go over, make a few passes. And then that should be enough to tell me if the spindle is in the right plane or if it's tilted one way or the other. If it's tilted, there should be kind of a little staircase kind of pattern in the cut. So I've got it set up, ready to do some testing. So let's try it out.
All right, I don't think I could have done any better than this on the first try. There is absolutely no lines or staircasing going on. There's a little bit of fuzziness right here, and I think maybe that was because I was running the spindle too slow. So I'm going to reset this test now to do front to back, and we will see if that is as good as left to right. So this is testing front to back and it looks just as good as left to right. I am really excited. I was really thinking I was going to have to do some fine adjusting on this, but it looks like I nailed it on the first try. So yeah, this, this is looking really good. So I've actually got the machine in a usable state, but I really can't say it's complete because I still need to clean up a bunch of the wiring. I've got to do something with the electronics because right now they're just sitting on top of a cardboard box. And I also need to drill and tap the rest of those holes for the spindle. But at least I can see the light at the end of the tunnel on this project because I have been working on this all of 2020 and I'm ready to get it done, start using this CNC router and move on to some other projects. So that's about all I've got for this video. If you made it this far, uh, I know you must like this. You must like the Making Stuff channel. So please give me a big thumbs up. And if you aren't a subscriber, please consider subscribing and ringing that bell so you don't miss any more upcoming Making Stuff videos. And thanks for watching.